But the major demand for, for me over the past year or so has been related to a concept that I introduced into mining quite separately from the sustainable development uh, initiative which I discussed, and that's the concept of social license to operate. And, um, and I, I, it's interesting that that's become so prominent because when I introduced the term, I, I, for me it was just a way of describing a certain situation that had evolved and it was done at a conference at the World Bank in uh, March of 1997 uh, when they convened a group to discuss the next 25 years of mining and my subject being political risk. Where was, where was managing political risk going to be going over the following 25 years? And this again is from the perspective of 1997. Simultaneously, we were working on sustainable development, but I didn't talk about sustainable development in this event. I talked just about a, a more narrow conception of political risk and the fact that globalization was doing two things. Globalization as a concept was just that emerging. And one thing, it was, it was reducing barriers to entry for foreign capital, investing in mining, and so you had a lot more transboundary operations of international mining companies. And two, it was uh, moving in the direction of more rapid communications um, around the world, uh, instant knowledge about anything that happened anywhere for anyone that wanted to know what it was. Um, and that was the very early days before the huge development of social media that has subsequently taken place. But in those days, there was a story which I initially heard of the World Bank of a mining company that had this amazing experience. They'd been working on an exploration project in Papua New Guinea and they'd reached an agreement with the local landowners around the site where they were exploring. And a few months later, they were talking to a tribe in Brazil about a possible exploration project and the tribe in Brazil says, we want the same deal you gave those people in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> and, and this seemed astounding. You know? yeah. <laughs> Nobody would think twice about that kind of story today. I mean, you, you just get it by Twitter. <laughs> Even if you're even if you're buried in some remote village in in, in, in some kind of tribal community, but um, but in those days it was new. And what that meant was that in many developing countries, the local communities where we were operating were isolated, in a sense, um, not just physically but politically from the governments of the countries. And. Uh, and so we would go in there and the government would basically say, well, you know, you don't worry about local community. And we were down there and we realized that, you know, we couldn't ignore the local community. And the fact that they were developing these international connections meant that they were beginning to have allies in the NGO community and uh, among churches, uh, media, academics, and so forth. And so we had to take all of that a lot more seriously. And so I said, well, you know, when we deal with the government, we're trying to get a government permit. So when we're dealing with local communities, I said, let's call it a social license. I mean, it's larger than a community permit because it's not just a community, it's a community plus, it's international allies. So that's the social license that we have to earn. And so I, I, I introduced this term purely as a point of reference for pragmatic political risk management. That we had to work at two levels, locally, and because we were on a two-track approval process for major mining processes locally and nationally. And, uh, but it was very quickly picked up by some of my friends in the NGO world that said, wow, he said, this, is, this is a way of empowering communities. And so they moved, they moved this simple concept from sort of a pragmatic reference point on political risk management to an ethical concept. Where they start talking about, A, the ethics of corporations. So you have corporate social responsibility, which requires that it works with communities in order to achieve the social license or the sustainable development framework, then sort of brought in social license, although not during the MMSD period, it's interesting to note, not until later. Um, or it, it, it vested communities with certain um, fundamental rights. Uh, so it, it transferred the, the, the focus of concern from the corporation attempting to get its, its, um, its uh, relationships with communities on a sustainable and non-conflictual basis to the community's right to have what now come, become, in many cases, free prior informed consent before any project can, can progress and so forth.